it's just it's a really tragic thing, uh, almost a, a second trail of tears for these families. During World War II, the United States government built military training camps to prepare U.S. troops to fight overseas. The federal government condemned and confiscated thousands of acres of land in order to construct training facilities and barracks to house U.S. military troops. Camp Gruber was established near Braggs, Oklahoma in 1942. The U.S. Army base is named for Brigadier General Edmund L. Gruber. The camp serviced U.S. Army units, including the 88th Infantry Blue Devil Division and the 42nd Infantry Rainbow Division. Camp Gruber also served as a prisoner of war camp, incarcerating approximately 3,000 captured German soldiers. Covering more than 65,000 acres and at a cost of $30 million, Camp Gruber seemingly sprang up overnight in the Cookson Hills region of Oklahoma. All through here, there's 16,000 acres out just in this section that we're in. There's another uh, 16,000 to the south of us. And then uh, over next door in what's the actual Camp Gruber these days is like 33,000. See this wall that's, that's coming up here? There's probably about a half a mile of it, at least, at least that we can see. And uh, it's, it's man-made and it goes with some of the homes that were out here in a pre-1940. The construction of Camp Gruber took a heavy toll on many Cherokee families. During the 19th century, the Cherokee Nation already lost an immeasurable amount of land culminating in their forced removal from their ancestral lands in the southeastern U.S. This removal in 1838, known as the Trail of Tears, forced Cherokees into Indian Territory. Cherokee land in Indian Territory began to be chipped away as well. By 1880, those lands were being sold off many times by force to other tribes or pioneers eager to claim the land as their own. This loss of land made way for Oklahoma statehood in the early 1900s. Much of the approximately 65,000 acres used to build Camp Gruber was acquired through condemnation of Cherokee-owned allotment land. This forced removal of Cherokees from their allotment land affected more than 70 Cherokee families who were given just 45 days to pack up their lives and leave their homes. Many Cherokee families had to leave behind almost all they owned in order to meet that deadline. Their forced removal meant leaving behind unharvested crops on family farms, schools, businesses, and family cemeteries. Many Cherokee families, like the Summerlin family, packed up and left the only life they knew. We lived in uh, Grandma and Grandpa's house. Grandma had died. It was on her allotment land. And then Mom and Daddy got married, and they moved in. I, I do remember it was in the, in the summertime. We had to leave on a real short notice. And everybody left their crops in the field and, and just, and the just gardens. moved out. And, uh, and we left everything. We left a, uh, an organ in the house and a big trunk full of pictures that I know of. I don't, I don't know what else we left, but I know we didn't get it all. But of course, we just had a wagon to move in, and that you can't be, put very much in a wagon. This is us six kids the day that we moved from Yellowhammer and they had given us 45 days warning. Daddy said that he got paid $900 and then they went to court. He got another 300, but he had to give the lawyer half of it. And that's the way with uh, several of them that went to court, that it just almost wasn't worth the trouble. In 1947, two years after the end of World War II and just five years after Cherokee families were removed to make way for the camp's construction, Camp Gruber was deactivated. It would change hands with several U.S. agencies throughout the 1950s and 60s when most of the original buildings and facilities were removed or destroyed. Today, Camp Gruber operates as an Oklahoma Army National Guard training facility.